friends, welcome to our mathematics program for grade 7. Today we are going to talk about fractions. That is, how to write a fraction, the different types of fraction, we'll see how to convert a fraction to a mixed number and vice versa. We will see together how to reduce a fraction in its lowest term. We shall also talk about equivalent fractions, right? I know that you have been doing fractions for years now and that you are expert in it, but it's always good to refresh. Now, let's see, what is a fraction? A fraction simply represents part of a whole or part of a group. Suppose that you've got a nice pizza, okay? Now, you, need, you want to share that pizza among you and seven friends. So you plus seven, that's eight. So you will share that pizza equally among eight person. Now, each one will get one share, okay? So one share, that will be one out of the eight pieces, out of the eight shares that you've got. So that's a fraction. A fraction, it is written as A over B. Right? Now, the A, that is the number which is above the line, it is called the numerator. And the B, the number below the line, it is called the denominator. So, you've got fraction, a number upon another one. The number which is at the top or above the line, it is called the numerator. And the number below the line, it is called the denominator. Now, let's see the types of fraction. Now, you've got three types. The first one is what we call a proper fraction. Now, what is a proper fraction? It's simply when the numerator, that is the number on the top, is less than the number at the bottom, that is the denominator. Okay? Example, you have 2 third, 1 over 8, half. These are proper fraction. The second one is improper fraction. Now, improper is when the numerator is greater or equal to the denominator. For example, 3 over 2, 7 over 4, these are improper fraction. Now, the third one, the third type is the mixed number. It consists of a whole number, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a proper fraction together. That is one and a half. This is an example of a mixed number. Two and one fifth. That's an example of a mixed number. Now, let's see how to convert an improper fraction into a mixed number. Now, let's take an example. You need to convert five over two as a mixed number. How do you do that? Let's see. Now, five over two, what does that mean? It means five halves. That is, suppose you take one rectangle, you cut it in two parts. You've got two halves. You take another one, that will be four halves. And the last one, you need only one of it. Why? Because you need five halves, right? So, what do we have? We have two whole, okay, and then you've got a half which is left. So that will be two holes and one half left. Therefore, we can say that five over two can be written as two and a half. Now, it will be rather time consuming to draw diagrams each time. Let's find a simpler way. Now, a simpler way would be to divide the numerator by the denominator. How do you do that? Now, 5 over 2, what does it mean? It means that 5 divided by 2. Okay? Let's do it. Now, how many 2's do you have in 5? You've got 2. Okay? 2 times 2, which is 4. That's what you see. And 5 minus 4, which is 1. Therefore, when we divide it, we see that 5 over 2 is simply 2, and you've got a remainder of 1, so you write it as 2 and 1 half. That's simple. 
Now we shall see some examples on how to work this out. Now, suppose that you are asked to convert 63 over 8 into a mixed number. How do you proceed? So, we divide 63 by 8. What does that mean, divide 63 by 8? It's simply, how many 8s do you have in 63? You've got 7, right? So, you're left with a remainder of 7. How do you write it? It's simply 7 and 7 over 8. Let's see another example. Suppose that you have 190 divided by 12. How do you do it? Same thing. So it will be 190 divided by 12. That is 15 and a remainder of 10. So you write it as 15 and 10 over 12. Now what we are going to see is how do you convert a mixed number into an improper fraction. Now you know what a mixed number is, you know what an improper fraction is, you want to convert a mix into an improper. Now let's take an example. Suppose that you have to convert 2 and 1 third into an improper fraction. How do you do that? Okay, let's see. So you start with the free, right? Which is the denominator. You take the denominator and you multiply it by the whole number, that is 2. 3 times 2, which is 6. Moving clockwise, you will add the numerator, which is 1. So, it will be 3 times 2, which is 6. 6 plus 1, which is 7. So, the fraction becomes 7 over 3. Remember, the denominator does not change. Only the numerator will change. The denominator always remain, remain the same. Now, let's take another example. Suppose that you need to find, to convert 10 and 2 fifths into an improper fraction. Always, you start with the denominator, that is 5. Working clockwise, you will, be, you will do 5 times 10, which is 50, and always you add the numerator. 50 plus 2, which is 52. So that will be 52 over 5, which is an improper fraction. Let's try this one now. What do you do? Start with the denominator. 7 times 23. Okay, and then you add the numerator. That will be 165 over 7. Remember, the denominator does not change. Now, these are some exercises for you to practice. Okay, how to convert to mixed numbers and how to convert to improper fractions. Now, you've seen... What is a fraction? You know how to convert fraction. What we are going to see now is how to reduce a fraction in its lowest term. Now, what does that mean to reduce a fraction to its lowest term? It's simply, simply, you rewrite the fraction with the smallest numerator and denominator. Okay? Right? But you need to be careful not to change the fraction. So, you will write the fraction in terms of its prime numbers. You have already done that. So, let's see an example. Suppose that you need to reduce 4 over 12 to its lowest term. How do we proceed? Now, 4, you all agree with me that 4 is simply 2 times 2. Okay? And 12 will be what? Will be 2 times 2 times 3. Now, you see numbers which are common in the numerator and denominator, okay? What do we do with these numbers which are common? We are going to cancel them out. Now, this two will cancel with the second one. See? The numerator cancel with the denominator. Now, you need to be careful. Why do you need to be careful? What's happening in the numerator? You don't have any number, right? but you don't put zero. 
Why don't you put zero? Because one is always a factor of itself. So, for the 12, when reduced to its lowest term, is 1 over 3. Okay? Never put zero. Now, let's try another one. Suppose that you are asked to reduce 15 over 70 to its lowest term. How do we do that? Same thing. 15 is simply 3 times 5. Okay? 70 is what? Is 2 times 5 times 7. Do we have common? Yes, we have. 5 is common in the numerator and the denominator. What do we do? We cancel it out. So we are left with what? You've got 3 in the numerator and you've got 2 times 7. Now 2 times 7, you all know that it is 14. So 15 over 70 reduced to its lowest term is simply 3 over 14. Another example, reduce 36 over 54 to its lowest term. Same thing, that is, you will write 36 in terms of its prime number. So it will be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And then you do for 54. Do you have common numbers? Yes, you have. What do we do? We cancel it out. So you cancel the 2, you cancel the 3, and you cancel the second 3. You're left with what? You're left with 2 and 3 in the denominator. Therefore, 36 over 54 is simply 2 over 3. Right? Now, seeing that term, equivalent fraction. Okay? You have done that, I think, in standard 3 or standard 4. But let's refresh. What do we mean by equivalent fraction? Equivalent fraction are those fractions which are equal in value, right? But they have different numerators and denominators. What does that mean? Simple. In, some, in simple English, it's simply 4 over 8. You can write it as what? Well, you can divide by 4 and write it as half. 4 over 8 is equivalent to half. 2 fifth is equivalent to 6 over 15. Right? Now, to obtain equivalent fraction of higher order, we multiply both numerator and denominator by the same number. This is very important. For example, if you're multiplying by 4 in the numerator, you need to multiply by 4 in the denominator. You can't do 1 times 4, which is 4, and 3 times 5, for example. You can't do that. If it is 4 in the numerator, it has to be 4 in the denominator. Okay? So these are some examples of equivalent fractions. One third it is equivalent to 4 over 12. 2 over 7 is equivalent to 10 over 35. 1 over 11 is equivalent to 7 over 77. Right? Now, if you want to obtain equivalent fractions of a lower order, okay, you've just done the higher order. For a lower order, what do you do? You divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same whole number. For example, 9 over 12, you divide the numerator by 3, you divide the denominator by 3, you will get 3 quarter. It has to be the same number in both the numerator and the denominator. That's very important. Now, why do we need equivalent fractions? Okay, let's say that you want to compare two fractions. How will you do that? Let's take this example. 5 over 8 and 7 over 8, you are asked which of these two is greater. The first thing that you look at is the denominator. Okay, are the denominators the same? In this case, they are. Now, if the denominators are the same, what do you do? You compare the numerator. Now, the numerator here, you've got two numerators, 5 and 7. 
Which one is greater? Seven is greater than five. So what can we say? We say that seven over eight is greater than five over eight. Now let's see another example. Which of half or one third is greater? Which one of them is greater? How will you do that? Now we've got a problem. The problem is that you've got denominators which are not the same. Two and three, they are not the same. What do we do? We can't stay with the problem. So we are going to find the LCM of two and three. The LCM of two and three is what? It is six, right? This is where equivalent fractions will come in. Now, you've got half. The first fraction was half. Now, half, if you multiply by three, the numerator and the de denominator, you will get three over six. Okay? Now, one third, if you multiply by two, in the numerator and in the denominator, you will get two over six. Now, are the denominators the same? Yes, they are. When they are, what do you do? You compare the numerators. What can we see? You've got three on one hand and you've got two on the other. So three is greater than two. What can we say? We say that three over six, which is half, is greater. So dear friends, here are some additional exercises for you to practice. Right? The first one is about reducing fraction in its lowest term. Then you've got equivalent fraction, comparing fraction. Okay? Today, what have we done? We did fractions. Okay? We refreshed on what is a fraction, what does it look like, how to reduce fraction in its lowest term. We've worked on how to convert improper fraction to mixed numbers and vice versa. Right? You're now advised to work out the exercises in this video together with the exercises in your textbook. Okay, this is very important. Okay, and we'll see in the next program. So for now, goodbye.